I'm proud to be a part of this occasion. In just a few moments, we're going to hear from somebody with big news. And as I've gathered from my few minutes of walking around, this is somebody who is a close friend um, and a lifetime friend of many of y'all. So that's got to be awesome, huh? Wow. Wow. It's one of the wonderful things about this community are the connections that we make here in Orange County and Central Florida that we hang on to forever. And there are very few places in the world that still have that. So um, we're glad to we're glad to have you still a part of our community. Communities that enjoy first-rate libraries are simply better places to live, and I think that plays a, a large role in the connectivity that we have here in Orange County. We're also blessed not just to have the connections that we make here at the library um, and the memories. You will probably see a video in the coming weeks that I recently did talking about my experiences as a, as a um, young mother raising four kids here and every week, the high point of our week, on a pretty limited budget with four kids and one, you know, one working parent, was going to the library and getting our books and storytelling. And kids, I mean, I don't know if families are still doing that, but that was such a special time for me and my best friend and her three kids and my four. So wonderful memories. But this is also a very innovative library system, and it serves an urban community of more than a million people. And I'm constantly amazed at the way this library is evolving to meet the growing needs of, of our community, of our youth, of our entire population, um, and adapting to new technologies and continuing to stay very, very meaningful. Libraries are a valuable part of this community in so many regards. And that's why I'm eager to hear and share the news with you in just a moment. And so let me call next then on Ted Maines to follow up and, and then we'll enjoy the um, announcement together. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ted Maines. I'm the Vice President of the Library's Board of Trustees. It is my distinct honor to welcome everyone here tonight. In a few moments, I will turn things over to a man who grew up in Orlando, graduated from Boone High School, and then went on to graduate from Princeton University. He later earned a master's degree from the Sloan School of Management at MIT and an MBA from the University of Chicago. This man is Orlando native Ken Melrose, a gifted CEO credited with turning the Toro Company around from near financial demise to a thriving and top performing business. He led that company for many years before stepping down a few years ago. Thankfully, Ked said he was refiring, not retiring, and that led him to start a new company called Leading by Serving, whose mission is to advance the principles of servant leadership in business organizations. Ken serves on many boards of directors, too numerous to mention, and is a frequent speaker at national conferences on the subjects of servant leadership and building a values-based corporate culture. Ken is also the author of the book, Making the Grass Greener on Your Side, A CEO's Journey to Leading by Serving. And I'm pleased to report that this book is available in the library's collection and that currently some of the copies have been checked out. <laughs> we are so pleased to have Ken here this evening, and we are even more pleased that he hasn't forgotten his Orlando roots and that his spirit of service has come full circle. Thanks to Ken's success and generous spirit, he's bringing his philosophy of pride and excellence to an important community institution that he grew up with, the Orlando Public Library. Please join me in extending a very warm welcome to Mr. Kendrick B. Melrose, a man on a mission who has some very exciting news. Now many of you here tonight, uh, maybe all of you, knew of my mother or knew her in some way. Perhaps your, your own mother's worked with her at the PTA, maybe it was on school projects or in civic endeavors, one of which might have been the building of a new library in the early 60s, right, right here on this footprint. Now the library has expanded north and expanded west, taking up the entire block. But it's still the, the library that we in the 60s knew and loved. My mother used to tell me as I was growing up that the purpose in life was to serve others. She would often use my dad as an example, talking about his military service during both World War I as a pilot in the Army Air Corps and then as a Marine in the Pacific during World War II. My dad even tried to serve in the Korean War. He signed up, but the Marines say, no, 
you're too old, get out of here, you've served your country and done well. My mother also exemplified service to others and she stood up for the disadvantaged or the little guy. She was a teacher at Memorial Junior High School and wrote articles for Parents Magazine. She later became a stockbroker for Thompson and McKinnon. Not many women were stockbrokers in those days. But writing er articles for Barron's Magazine on behalf of the small stockholder versus Merrill Lynch's big block trading. After I retired from the Toro Company, I began thinking about doing something for her here in Orlando. Now this idea had its origins when I was visiting Disney World with my grandchildren. We took a break because I wanted to see, have them see where I grew up. So we drove down Cherokee Drive and I stopped the car on the front of the house and we got out so I could point to my bedroom over here and where we would eat breakfast or dinner on, on the porch. You remember that, Alan? And the woman there uh, who was living there, she kind of looked out the window wondering who this crazy guy was pointing and, and with these little kids. And so she came out and said, you know, what, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I tell you what, I'm showing my grandchildren where I used to live. I used to live in this, this house. And uh, my name is Ken Melrose. And she said, Melrose? You know, everyone I know calls this the Melrose House. <laughs> well, that made me proud to think that the Melrose name, perhaps from my mother's many years of service, had not faded away. So I thought about various ideas that uh, would be appropriate to honor her, maybe something at Rollins College that came to mind, as well as maybe doing something in Cherokee Park right across our, our home. But I remembered that what she talked about the most and what she was most proud of was the Orlando Public Library. So on another trip to Orlando, I, I drove to the library with Nancy Humphreys, and we got a tour from our host, Mary Ann Hodell, and, uh, the, who is the library's director and chief executive officer. As Mary Ann took us from floor to floor, the idea of not honoring my mother here at the library started to get legs. Once back home, I wrote to Mary Ann about what I was thinking, and we discussed some ideas, and she sent me some videos to give me possible ways to make a, a memorial for my mother and how that might look. She also gave me this booklet about the Orlando Public Library. It's 50 years of history from 1923 to 1973. And so I read through it, and Lo and behold, a bunch of very familiar names jumped off the pages. Names that I think most of you will know, such as Duckworth, Jameson, Warlow, K. Park, Brumbach, Newsom, where are you? Newsom, uh, Overstreet, Barnett, Ivy, Miller, Ellis, and McGuire all in one way or another, friends of my parents, and some, in fact, household names. Another name in the book that made me smile was Miss, Mrs. Richard Jolly. We have some chemistry people here in the room. Our chemistry teacher at Boone High School. These long-standing connections gave ample affirmation that this was indeed the place where my mother should be honored. As some of you may remember, both my parents were pretty keen on technology and innovation. And eventually, they became interested in technology stocks. In fact, when Control Data was spun off from Sperry Rand back in 1957, these are two Minneapolis companies, by the way, they gave me, my parents gave me for Christmas, five shares of Control Data. Now, I was a teenager. I was still very much into collecting Lionel train equipment. 
which my grandchildren and their grandpa still enjoy, by the way. So I was pretty disappointed in getting this certificate instead of an engine or a cattle car. But I never sold my five shares until years later when my eldest daughter was in college. Now, you can do the math, but those original five years paid her junior year's tuition in full from five shares of control data. I think it, it uh, sold for $20 a share then. Well, as mother and dad became more interested in technology stocks while I was at MIT, they talked constantly about the high-tech startup companies in the Boston area, such as High Voltage Engineering, eg and &G, Boston Scientific, and Digital Equipment. All companies that I would drive by to and fro from my classes uh, in Cambridge. As I shared all this with Mary Ann, she came up with the idea of naming the West Wing of the second floor of the, as the Dorothy L. Melrose Center for Technology, Innovation, and Creativity. Well, there was no debate. I don't think we had much discussion about it at all. No other ideas surfaced. It absolutely fit to a T. T as in technology. So it now gives me great pleasure to present Mary Ann in the library with this check. Thank you so much, Mr. Melrose. We're just really overwhelmed with your generosity and this wonderful gift for our community. Uh, it's um, a wonderful honor for your mother, Dorothy Melrose, and this gift represents the single largest donation to the Orange County Library System ever in its history. This most generous act of philanthropy paves the way for an exciting chapter in our future here this charitable gift from the Kendrick B. Melrose Family Foundation brings us unique opportunities to grow and explore new projects together in our community. It will be used to establish a futuristic center for technology, innovation, and creativity to be housed on the second floor of this library. As a lasting tribute to Mrs. Melrose, it will be named in her honor, and when complete, the Dorothy Lumley Melrose Center for Technology, Innovation, and Creativity promises to live up to her great name in serving the community as well as she did. Its presence will significantly add to what the library already offers, and it will bring important new energy to downtown Orlando and our residents, I do believe, will benefit richly from this synergy. Once we knew this gift was coming, we reached out to members of our community to secure their input on what they thought was important and needed here at the library. We held two focus groups to determine what our future could look like, and the feedback they gave us was invaluable. A nearly 21,000 square foot space on the second floor will be carved out as a hub where community members can connect to collaborate and create. The state of the art center will feature a digital media lab, video production capabilities, including a green screen, a sound recording studio, a creative and a creative commons area. And next year, we hope to incorporate a fab lab and 3D copier. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly, it will be a great new resource that prov proves to be of lasting value to this community. The Dorothy, Lumley the Dorothy Lumley Melrose Center for Technology, Innovation, and Creativity will be a bounty for those seeking creative outlets for professional or, per or personal purposes. Recently, the Orange County Library was, center, was honored to be recognized as the Library of the Future by the American Library Association. Today's gift ensures that we remain on that path 
by bringing the latest and the greatest innovations to life for our residents. Thank you again. And uh, let me assure you that this incredible gift will be used to the utmost benefit for our Central Florida community. As Library Board Vice President Mr. Maines shared earlier, Ken Melrose is a man who believes in leading by serving. Mr. Melrose knows the importance of being mindful of what we can do today and in the years ahead, and we will no doubt affect future generations. He is also living proof of something that the great statesman Winston Churchill said when he said that we make a living by what we get, and we make a life by what we give. Please join with me in expressing our great gratitude to Mr. Melrose for this outstanding gift and wonderful legacy for your mother. Thank you.